Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This time we're going to talk about a component that is quite commonly used in power stages. I'm talking about the triac. This is a triac, this is one too, and this is also a triac. This component is very similar to a transistor. That is, it will allow you to turn different types of equipment on and off. In this case, equipment that works with alternating current. Therefore, it's quite commonly used in power stages. You will be able to find them on different types of electronic boards. For example, on this electronic board, we have a triac. Right here, which is responsible for controlling the current delivered to a motor. And in this video, what we are going to learn is how to measure a triac and see how a triac should work. We'll also see the most important characteristics to consider. This and more in this video. So, without further ado, let's begin. But first, a big hello to all my subscribers, those who comment, and those who share the videos, and a special shout out to channel member Chris. Chris, thank you for your support. Seriously, thank you very much. And if you're not a member yet, you can become one in the members section. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is analyze the triac symbol. This is the symbol for a triac, where we can see that it has three pins. Gate, T1 or anode 1, T2 or anode 2. And regarding the pin distribution on your triac, that will depend a lot on the model you are using. However, in most cases, this is the distribution. Now, regarding the appearance of your triac, that is, the package, it usually has this type of package in most cases. However, you may find them in different sizes, depending on the current being handled. You may find it in quite small sizes, as is the case with this encapsulation. Now, regarding the measurement, well, for that we are going to set our multimeter to continuity or diode mode. Now, to take the measurements, we'll use the symbol. In the case of the gate with respect to T1, we have to obtain a measurement on the multimeter. It doesn't matter if I put positive here and negative here, or vice versa. For that, we're going to use this triac. Between T1 and the gate, we should get a reading. And if I measure it the other way around, it should still measure a similar value. Keep in mind that the reading depends a lot on the triac being used. So that you have a reference value, we'll use this triac, which is of higher power. And that way, we'll see the difference between two triacs. It's a much smaller value. It shows 55 ohms. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It simply means that, depending a lot on the power, the value will be much smaller. But it should never measure zero, nor a very large value. Now, between T1 and T2, you should never measure a value. Otherwise, it would indicate that the triac is in bad condition. Let's see between T1 and T2. Remember, it shouldn't measure anything. This triac is in good condition. Now let's do the test with a triac that is damaged. For example, this triac is damaged. Let's see between the gate and T1. T1 and gate. It measures zero ohms. Now, the other way around. It also measured 0 ohms. Now, between T1 and T2, it shouldn't measure anything. 
but it measures zero, meaning it's completely damaged, both between the gate and T1, and between T1 and T2. It's completely damaged. Now, regarding the characteristics to consider, these would be the ones here. The voltage that your triac can withstand between T1 and T2. The higher the voltage, the better. Then we have the current that your triac can handle. That will depend a lot on what you want to control. There are triacs of 4, 16, 24, or even 40 amps. Then there's the trigger current. This is a characteristic to consider, since there are triacs that require a lot of current. And there are others that require very little current to activate the triac. That's the current supplied to the gate with respect to T1 for the triac to function. Then we have the trigger voltage. This trigger voltage is the voltage that must exist between the gate and T1 for the triac to function. Since a triac is composed of several BJT transistors, it also needs 0.7 volts. Because a BJT transistor needs 0.7 volts between its base and emitter to operate. And it's the same in the case of a triac. Then we have the VTM. VTM is the voltage that will appear between T1 and T2 when the triac is operating. And this will allow us to know how much power the triac will dissipate when it allows a certain amount of current to pass through. These characteristics are similar in most triacs. That's why they are not usually taken into account. However, these three characteristics should be considered. Well, that's regarding the characteristics. Now let's look at some practice. All right. Now let's look at some practice. First, we're going to analyze this circuit, in which we can see that we have 12 volts of alternating current, which we will use to confirm that the triac can work with alternating current. Allowing both half cycles of the alternating current to pass through. And to confirm that, we're going to use two LEDs that are connected backwards. That is, we have connected the cathode of one LED to the anode of the other LED, along with their respective protection resistors. This will allow us to confirm that the triac works with alternating current. Here we have the assembled circuit in which we have a triac connected. Now let's see if both LEDs light up. As you can see, both LEDs light up. That means the triac is allowing both half cycles of the alternating current to pass through. But how can I confirm that it's allowing both half cycles of the alternating current to pass through? Well, first let's talk a little about this component. This component is an SCR, and as you can see, it's practically a diode. And if you look closely, the triac has two diodes. That is to say, a triac is composed of two SCRs. Two of these here. Now let's confirm that the SCR only allows one half cycle to pass through. And if you had two SCRs, that is, one triac, it would allow both half cycles to pass through. We're going to replace the triac with an SCR. Keep in mind that the pinout is the same as the triacs. We press the push button. And only one of the LED slides up. This confirms that the triac does allow both cycles of alternating current to pass. Very good. Now let's look at another circuit. All right. Now to finish up, let's look at this circuit. In this circuit, 
we'll use a 5 watt light bulb, which will make the triac handle more current than in the previous circuit. Now, in this circuit, we'll measure the voltage that appears between T1 and T2 when the triac is operating. We'll also measure the voltage that appears, or the required voltage, between the gate and T1. We'll also see the difference between the two circuits with respect to the required activation current. Please note that we are using direct current for this circuit. However, they can also use alternating current, but this time we are using direct current, so you can see that the triac can also be used with direct current. All right, let's look at the circuit. Here we have the circuit as I mentioned. We are using a direct current source. Now let's press the button and see if the light bulb turns on. And as you can see, the light bulb turns on. And only one pulse was needed. That is, I didn't have to hold the button down. To turn it off, we have to interrupt the current. Now, this means that the triac only needs a short pulse to activate. And it will remain activated until the power supply is cut off. Let's try again. We cut off the power. Now let's try this other triac. We press it. And it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because this triac needs more current at the gate. For that, we have to change the resistor. We have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, and we're going to replace it with a 1 kilo ohm resistor. This will supply us with a current of approximately 12 milliamps. We press. And as you can see, the triac is now working. Therefore, some triacs require more or less current at their gate to function. Now let's measure the voltage between T1 and T2. We set the multimeter to DC voltage. We press. And as you can see, the voltage between T1 and T2 drops to almost 0.9 volts. And as you may recall, the maximum voltage should be 1.7 volts. However, this voltage will increase as the current increases. Now let's look at the voltage at the gate with respect to T1. It shouldn't be greater than 0.7 volts. Therefore, we have the voltage between the gate and T1, which is 0.7 volts. Therefore, the characteristics of a triac are confirmed. And this way you can check if your triac is in good condition or test it through a circuit, just like we just did. Well guys, that's how the video ends. Now, don't forget, if you liked the video, a like really helps the channel. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.